Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to look at and build our own document assembly tool. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, document assembly tools are things that put a document together. Um, I think the best example are letters you get from the government. Uh, you rarely, 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 rarely ever get a custom, you know, handwritten letter from the government. Most of the time they are canned responses, but they do have a bit of customization depending on who you are, where you are, things like that. And so I'm thinking, for example, a letter from the tax agency, you might get, uh, you know, standard hello and goodbye at the bottom, but in the middle, you're going to see different sections. You happen to be a senior, so it says if you're over 65, you might want to apply for this. If you are low income and senior, you'll have the senior and then another section that says you are low income. Here, apply for these things and you get these credits. If you are you know, a veteran, if you're from a certain state, uh, all of these pieces, they just splice them all together and give you a letter that's relevant to you, customize a little bit to you, but really still canned responses. And so you can imagine that these kind of software uh, apply in every workplace. Yes, tax letters from the government, but contracts, insurance documents, uh, even responses from IT support, very rarely can you scale up and still give you know, personal heartfelt messages each time. Instead, what you are getting are these uh, different canned pieces of responses and joining them together. Now, I figure AI might change that in the future when it becomes cheaper and better, but for now, it really is a mechanical process of checking off various boxes and these fields, these sections, these paragraphs show up. And so I found hot docs here. Uh, I'm not even going to play you the video because it, it's such a terrible explanation of what it does and it's long winded. But that is a commercial paid piece of software that does document assembly. Uh, you also have DocAssemble, which is an open source version. I wanted to show you the demo very quickly. Um, you can go back and say, you know, answer different questions. Uh, I can put various fields into it. Ooh, this is a suffix. Let's be senior. And you answer questions along the way. And the idea is by the end of it, it can spit out a relevant document with you know, your name, your address, your situation, and all of that. This is very much geared towards legal, by the way, so I think it'll give you some sort of complaint. Uh, not sure what this is. But by the end of it, it spits out a Word document. That is what I'm trying to do. Now, the difference is this one, an interview is geared towards end users. So I create this document and then I allow anyone in the world to use it. Uh, I don't like that. I want to build something that I can use in my workplace. And so instead of having this, you know, one at a time like an interview, I love it if it just takes a uh, giant panel on the side lists out all the questions and I could just check, 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 enter a few names and addresses and spits it out. Okay, so that is a long-winded explanation of what we're going to do. Um, the last bit is I have heard of PyZip pi pi um, and its use for putting together um, Word documents. This is a real challenge because if you think about this and if we decided to do just markdown, create markdown files, this is an incredibly easy task to do. The challenge here is Microsoft Word documents that are in a different file format, essentially a zip compressed file with different pieces in there. Um, and this is why we need PizZip, PyZip. Uh, to do it. So what we're going to do is actually use Claude Dev again. 
I've already done a video on it. Uh, we did a very simple project. I think this one is going to be a, a more difficult one. So, um, can you help me build a document assembly tool that will uh, accept docx word documents, edit, make some standard edits, let's say replace, let's say putting hello world at the front of the document, and allow the user to download a modified document. I want you to build a single page HTML solution with no back backend. You should use PyZip and docx. Okay, so uh, let's just rack up the cost for my API cost and get this through pretty quickly. Now, going back to uh, the instructions here, um, I, of course, described very quickly a document assembly tool. Uh, the idea is you put in a document file, docx file, it makes some standard edits, and then it spits it back out for the user. Um, but more importantly, I wanted this as an HTML file. This is the easiest way to allow lots of users in an organization to use it. There's no installation, you know, they just use Chrome or Firefox or Edge and they can use it. Uh, lastly, because I know of PyZip and DocX Templator, um, we, can, we can use that. So they created an index file, um, project structure, HTML file, and test solution, blah, blah, blah. Let's approve this file. This makes sense. I can't see the rest of this, but here we go. Uh, it has called a few things. PyZip, docx templator, makes a lot of sense here. Um, File saver, I guess that's to manipulate the files to accept and then allow users to save. Style, all this. I just want to see the modify document here. So it's adding set data, hello world. Okay. Um, so it wants to run this page and let's see where it goes here. Okay, it's using my browser, so I just, I'm just going to put it back over here. Um, can you allow the user to drag and drop instead of using a file? Okay, so I like the drag and drop solution instead, and I'm going to search up sample docx file on the internet and just download an example docx file here. We're at five cents. That's not horrible. So here's a lorem ipsum docx file that I downloaded off the internet. Looks pretty good. Has a whole bunch of different things. Tables, charts, images, different style of text. It's a great example for us to use. Um, okay. And I am just going to get ready on the side here as it tries to make these changes. Okay, so uh, let's refresh. There's a drag and drop here. I am going to drag and drop, modify and download. That doesn't seem to be working. So let's go in here. I am getting this error, please fix. Okay. 
Now, of course, as we go through, um, we can create different checkboxes. We can definitely clean up this interface, but for now, we have a canned requirement here. We are just adding hello world no matter what selection is made, whatever is changed. So not too worried about that yet, but uh, let's refresh. We have a brand new version. We're going to drag and drop, modify and download. Oh, pi zip is not defined. Okay. So I have run into this error, and I suspected this would be the case when we did this. Yes. So Cloudflare didn't have these CDNs. Was not working as the right CDN. So docx templator works great. Um, but I am going to... Uh, find another CDN. So, zip CDN. It's 3.1.1. Let's use unpackage. And, oh. What did I do here? Okay, let's just use JS Deliver instead. Uh, 3.1.1. Hmm. And utils min. Okay, so we have saved a new version of it, pointing at the right places. So if I refresh, drag and drop here, modify and download, we have a new file. Hmm, I don't see our hello world here. Hello. Hmm. Okay, so clearly it did not work. I am going to refresh one more time. Oh, uh, let me just look at this one more time. this and we will tell Claude file downloaded correctly but no modifications were used. Can you ensure that the file changes properly? That's not even making a whole ton of sense but luckily Claude will understand. Uh, so, Claude wants to read. This is racking up in price faster than I thought. This is not a long file at 140 lines or so. Uh, so they changed to use unpackage as well. What else did they do here? They're checking for paragraphs and line breaks. Oh, what is this? Render the document, replace all instances of hello world by hello world. Where did that come from? Okay, uh, let's not overthink it. 
refresh, refresh, refresh. And we will drag it in and modify again. Fingers crossed. Still nothing. Sample doc at the spot. I am going to very quickly download another sample here. Whoa, this is a big one. Um, 35, 33 kilobytes. Let's just replace and try a different file here. Very comprehensive again, still nothing. So quite disappointing. Oh, uh, the new selection by adding hello. Look at that. Um, the, this solution now correctly modifies docx files by adding hello world at the beginning of the document as long as the hello world template tag is present in the original document. Those were not the instructions. I want you to add hello world regardless of whether whether the template tag is present or not should just be added to all files so claude must have misunderstood or you know what it may have been me whole world up yeah so once again i'll allow claude to take a look at the file it's solving a lot of the nitty-gritty here, but you do need a bit of patience to work with it. Okay, let's approve. I'm just a bit worried here. Oh. Well, let's try this. Let's see how this one goes. Uh, so I'm going to refresh. It's using a different package than I suggested, so it could be possible that I have chosen poorly. So we'll go back to that original sample. Uh, docx is not defined. Oh, once again, Cloudflare. Okay, um, so docx. Oops. Let's see again. Okay, uh, doc x j s. And replace here. I suspect this isn't the right one. Um, I'm going to tell it, please undo docx. Yes, and keep using docx templater and pyzip. I am quite certain that we should have been using the other one. So I'm I'm just gonna tell Claude to go back. Once again, racking up the costs. I am not thrilled about this. Uh, But we'll see here. Uh, 
iZip speed in, and I think we use unpackage 3.11. As great as all this AI stuff is, sometimes you still really need to know what you're doing or else you won't pick up on these errors. Okay, so we'll refresh and hopefully get a working version this time. Ha ha ha! Okay, so hello world at the very top. And just to make sure that it's universally working, uh, I'll refresh and use the other sample document that we had, and hello world, you can see at the top here. Um, this video has stretched longer than I thought. I would have liked to have built this out a bit further, but I think the general idea is already there. So I'm going to close this up and walk you through the what is happening and you can modify it so that you know you add different things depending on what checkboxes are checked and we had some earlier ideas in which Claude was able to go in and replace certain tags within the document with what is specified here okay so um very important, a lot of this is just uh, handling what happens if you drag and drop a file into this box. Uh, this is pretty templated code, but uh, it does get a bit complicated on how to handle files. So this is a great way that, um, as far as I can tell, AI has always been really good at just putting one of these in, whereas I'd have to find you know, some old code to get this working. Uh, the trick in all of this is this modify document. So once we click that modify button, it runs this modify document. Uh, it reads the file, uh, uses PyZip to basically unzip the file, um, and then uses docx templator to read that zip file. From there, uh, it's going to figure out all of these things, go through uh, the various sections, but most importantly, it's going to create this new text piece, hello, hello world, and throw it into the right XML file. So a docx file looks like one file, but it is in reality a zip file with all of these XML files and, pre and others in that archive. So docx templator is able to fetch the right one, which is the document.xml file, and we're going to create you know, a new paragraph, a new piece of text, and it says hello world, and it appends it right at the top here, first child. Uh, from there, we're going to use PyZip again, merge them all together, create that blob, and then download it back. Uh, you just need the general idea because AI and Claude is getting pretty good at just doing it autonomously. I have a feeling that if we just kept throwing the error back at them or what is wrong or what's not behaving, uh, it was going to get to an answer eventually. I gave it PyZip and docx templator as a bit of a shortcut, but somehow it would have kept going and gotten to the answer. Uh, where I am a bit unhappy about is that it is $0.34.35. Cents. Uh, doesn't break the bank. I'm not going to go bankrupt over this, but this is a rather simple 150-line text, and costing $0.35, cents, I can imagine larger projects packaging them all up. Claude Dev is going to start costing a pretty penny. Anyways, uh, I am going to call it a day, and if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, uh, let me know in the comments how I can make this more engaging. Thanks for watching, and see you next week for another project.